Hi again, everybody. It's Jim McLennan here with another One Tune Concert. It's been quite a while since I've put one of these up, so I think it's time to do it again. And as usual, I'll play you a tune and then talk about it a little bit afterwards. So, that of course is Somewhere Over the Rainbow from the movie, I think 1939, The Wizard of Oz. I think that's one of the uh, most beautiful melodies I've ever heard, that's for sure. And um, if you like any of this stuff, by the way, just uh, push the subscribe button. If you're looking at this on YouTube, that may help eventually someday. Um, I heard Tommy Emanuel play his arrangement of this, and of course it's uh, far fancier, a lot more wild and crazy stuff going on in it. Uh, but it gave me the idea that I would like to arrange, do my own arrangement of it, uh, partly because I couldn't play all that wild and crazy stuff, and partly because that's what I like to do, is take tunes and, and arrange them uh, myself. So uh, I, I started out uh, in doing it in the key of A, which is where he did it, and it's also my favorite key for arranging guitar tunes. Point this up so you can hear me a little better. And uh, I came up with just sort of a, a, a nice standard set of chords that worked fine with it, and I thought I would try and color the chords a little more by changing, uh, changing them slightly. In other words, staying with pretty much a standard chord, but maybe changing one of the notes in it. Uh, and when I did all this, and you use your ear to be your guide here, you, you, you try a, a different chord, and if you like it, you keep it, and if you don't, you try something else. Uh, and that's really all there is to sort of turning these things into uh, more interesting chords and more jazzy sorts of chords. Um, and when I uh, did this, um, I was surprised actually at how many dissonant chords I came up with. Um, and dissonant just meaning they're not, they're not standard majors or minors. Uh, one example, uh, one I use somewhere in here, and it, this is an example of what you can do. You want to change the chord a little bit. 
there's a B minor seventh chord if you just take this F sharp note here and move it down to F natural, but keep everything else the same, the chord goes from that to this. Oops. And that, you might like that better, or you might not. Um, the other thing that I did quite a lot in this is, and something I do a lot in uh, a bunch of my arrangements, uh, partly because I like the sound of these particular kind of chords, and partly because I have some limitations with my left hand, is I, I play some chords where you've got some fretted notes part way up the neck and some open strings at the same time. That sort of thing. And, uh, and I can't think of any others, but there's, there's quite a few in there. Um, and I just, I just like the sound of those and they ring nicely and they sort of help a beautiful melody uh, kind of flow and it gives it some room to breathe at the same time. Uh, but back to the dissonant chords for a minute, uh, there's, there's this chord is in the song a number of places, in kind of in the, in the intro and in the little sort of things between the verses. Kind of an odd, odd sounding chord, and that is a, an E7 flat 9. Normally E7 would be just like this. You'd have an E in the top. If you change that E to an F, you get this. And then I've got a couple of different inversions of the, that through the song. Uh, but the, the, my favorite chord, and I, I don't know how I did it, I just stumbled around until I found something I liked, is in this part. That one you know, resolves to. I think that's a beautiful chord. But on its own, it's not a beautiful chord. Uh, if you listen, just listen to it a, a little bit. Uh, just play some other chords to clear your <laughs> palate. Just listen to this. It's kind of ugly. It's got this in it. Ew. Can that be right? Well, a lot of times it wouldn't be right, but in context. And that really showed me what, how important context is to these sorts of things. And then there's a few of those chords that on their own would be really quite ugly, but they, they become, uh, I think, they add some emotion to the, to the tune. And again, you have to use your, um, use your ear to decide whether you like it or not. That chord, by the way, is a, uh, that's a, an E6 with a flat 9. And what's odd about it is, is the flat, well, lots of things, but the, uh, it's got this dissonance in it. Um, and also the, that's the flat nine, the, the funny sounding note. Usually that would be on the high end of the chord. It would probably be more like this. Still sounds funny, but in this case it's in the middle of the chord. And that's what makes it a little unusual. Anyway, that's a lot of technical talk. I hope you like the tune. And if you do, please subscribe and send me a note. Tell me if you like it. Tell me if you don't like it. I'll read that too. And I hope you come back for the next one, whenever that is. Thanks very much.